Welcome to another advanced game dev tutorial. Today we are going to cover trajectories with drag. And there are multiple ways to calculate them. One of them is more simple and um, usually also covered in other tutorials. There's one that is a little bit more advanced with some benefits in performance and we're also going to cover this today. So let's talk about why uh, we are actually calculating trajectories in the first place. Usually we want to know some information about where the object is in the future. So it's um, uh, a way we want to simulate uh, how the object will behave with physics forces over time. And there are basically three things. The most common three things are that you want to calculate the whole trajectory, like you want to display it with a line renderer, for example. And the second reason is you want to know when an object hits the ground. Um, the exact time point when it happens. And the third reason is that you want to know how fast you have to shoot that is so that an object hit, hits uh, a certain position. So this is uh, a very common problem. Any game where you uh, can shoot something or where something is falling down and you want to know the exact time point when it will hit the ground, uh, you will have to do some form of this calculation. And it is important enough that uh, I was willing to do a lot of mathematics to get a, a better performance. And you will see it later in this video. But let's start very simple. You probably know the formula above from school. Um, and we can simply put it into a method that takes uh, time as a parameter and uh, returns uh, the position at the trajectory at that point in time. And there is really not a lot to say to this. Um, it is very clean, it is very simple, it is very fast. The problem is um, it doesn't account for uh, drag. So this is now the code that accounts for the drag factor. And this is usually also how other tutorials do it. It is the simple way I mentioned um, at the start. And for calculating all points of a trajectory, it is actually the best way to do it. Uh, but you also already see a big problem here, and that is uh, this while loop here. And the reason I um, do not like it is because we don't really know when or if it will ever stop. So of course you can make it somewhat safer by uh, limiting the amount of times you can iterate through the loop. And your condition actually might look different here. I just assumed we know at which height we will hit the target or maybe we have a, a bounce below the world where we know like if any object is below this bounce then um, we don't have to calculate the trajectory any further. It, f it fell below the world. But all in all, we really don't know how long this will take and how many steps. So when you want to calculate the complete trajectory, then this is not too bad. You can increase the uh, time step. Uh, here I set it to fixed out the time because it's, that is how the physics work. But you can increase it. The results get a little bit inaccurate, but uh, you will get uh, all the points you need for the line renderer or for whatever reason you chose to calculate all the positions. But it gets really bad when you want to know uh, where is an object in 10 seconds because then you still have to iterate through the loop for 10 seconds, whatever that means, how many iterations that is. So it's really not uh, a good way of doing this. It would be better if you had a form like before. And the reason we have to do a loop here is because the velocity above, which you, by the way, is the default answer for this question when you search for it online, uh, because this formula is not in a closed form, but in uh, a series, we have to um, we get velocity at a frame n by calculating first the velocity at frame minus one, and so um, the idea is um, to get uh, to get rid of this loop is to uh, find a closed form first for the velocity, and then to simply integrate it um, to get a position formula, and that is precisely the more advanced form I was talking about at the start. This is the result. Uh, it certainly doesn't look easy, um, but the actual computations are not really that difficult. And yeah, it's really cool. We can find a, a closed form for the velocity. So now we know um, for uh, each point in time, we know the velocity of the object and then we can integrate it. 
and we know the position of the object at each point in time. And so, uh, obviously, I skipped a lot of mathematical uh, steps here, but you can find an article below in the description. Um, and now we just take this formula, write it into code, into some method, and we've gotten rid of the while loop, that is all. This is the code. Uh, it really is just the same as the formula, but in C sharp. The only difference is that I multiply by uh, delta time again, and the reason is that the uh, uh, function is defined in frame time. So this means like a time of one is uh, one frame and not uh, one second. And so I multiply again, so I get the uh, time in seconds instead of the frames. Here's a small demo that predicts uh, a path um, for a cannonball that is going to be shot out of this turret. And uh, it uses the formula I showed it just now, and you see the cannon just follows the path and hits the target mark exactly where predicted. And uh, you can find the demo uh, below um, as usual. You can also play around with the values here, and you see how the trajectory changes, and you can adjust the drag, and yeah. So the, the prediction works, and it works very well, but we have two problems uh, with the formula itself. And the first problem is the logarithm that can become undefined, which happens at zero. Uh, but this is a problem we can kind of ignore because it only happens when the drag is above 50 or some other value that is very high and this is not a very common value for a drag for a game object in your world. Uh, the other problem is when the drag becomes zero because we divide by zero. So uh, we have to do something about this. But uh, luckily, we know the formula for when the drag is zero because this was the first formula we started with. So we simply check in the code is the drag zero and then use either this formula or the other one. So now the method looks like this. So now we know where the object is at a certain point in time, but sometimes we want to know when is the object at a certain point. And uh, we can do this by using a root finding algorithm. And what it does is that it finds the uh, position in the function where the value is zero. And there are actually multiple root finding algorithms. And I chose Newton's method because it is simpler to calculate one position and one velocity than to calculate two positions. A thing we need to be careful about uh, with Newton's method is that we have two roots and not only one. And so uh, we need to first decide which one we are interested in. Usually most of the time we are interested in this one. And so before we start the uh, Newton's method actually proper, we first check if the tangent, which is uh, represented with this arrow here, arrow here which, is the, um, which is the velocity, uh, if, it is, uh, if the y value of the velocity is positive or negative. So in essence, we only start using Newton's method when the object is already falling down. Which would be approximately here, which is right after we um, reach the maximum height of the, of the trajectory. So the way Newton's method works is that we first start with an initial guess, an initial estimate, when the object will reach uh, the root zero. And because we are interested in a very specific route, namely the second one, um, we are first checking if the object is still flying up or if it is already flying down. And if it is still flying up, we are advancing the time forward by a factor of two. And otherwise, we are uh, calculating the position divided by the tangent, which gives us the direction uh, where the route lies. And if we do it often enough, we get very close to it. And if we are below a threshold epsilon, we return the time. So now instead of iterating an unknown amount of time through a loop to find uh, the time when we reach a certain position, we just use uh, Newton's method to find it very quickly. So this is how I place the crosshair from the turret. Uh, I first calculate uh, when it will hit uh, a certain height. Then I use the time to calculate the position. And then I give a little bit of an offset to avoid set fighting. And that is all. And again, you can play around with the values in the demo scene. So I started saying that it is probably the fastest way to calculate a complete trajectory is the while loop, and it is true. Uh, now I showed you that finding out where, where an object is at a time t 
or when is an object at a certain position is very fast with uh, this equation. Um, so the only thing from our initial three most common problems that is left is uh, finding out with, with, with what velocity do we have to shoot something that it reaches uh, a certain point. So this is actually very easy, we just reformulate the equation and we get the start velocity. And then you just put it into the code and you're done. So I hope you uh, liked this video, uh, please follow the channel, please leave a like. Um, if you have a question, uh, you can ask it in the comments. Uh, you can check out my social media accounts, they're also linked uh, down below and on the channel page. And uh, you can also find uh, a link to the project on GitHub for uh, this turret. And uh, you will also find an article about the mathematics behind uh, the calculations here, uh, also in the description. And um, yeah, goodbye. Oh, and I have a Patreon if you want to support me. And I have uh, tools on the Unity Asset Store if you want to buy them. And I have a game, a strategy game uh, uh, for mobile phones. Um, yeah, just saying.